Hello Emergence family, Laura here. It is an absolute pleasure to be with you all again. Today we're going to be studying the book of Acts, or also known as the Acts of the Apostles, um, which just to give some background was an account of the early church following the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today we're going to look at the lame beggar healed. Um, we're going to be studying chapters, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. So let's read together and dive in. Now Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a man for, who was lame from birth was being carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple that is called the beautiful gate, to ask alms of those entering the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive alms. And Peter directed his gaze to, at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood and began to walk and enter the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat at the beautiful gate of the temple asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So I just think this, this is a phenomenal account. So as Peter and John were going up to the temple, it was the ninth hour or around three o'clock in the afternoon, which was the usual time of prayer for the Jews. Um, this time also had a special significance to the Christians because it was the very hour on which Jesus had died on the cross. Now, as Peter and John were on their way into the temple, they met this man who had been lame from birth. He was at the gate and he was asking them for money. Um, now, what Peter did next was interesting, to say the least, as he said, look at us making sure that this man's attention was solely on them and preparing him for what was about to happen next. Now, in this moment, I can't help but wonder what the man was thinking when Peter said to him, look at us, right? The text tells us that the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And I just think it's awesome you see, to see what actually happens next, right? So as Peter has this man's attention, he admitted something to this man that he probably did not want to hear. Um, so Peter says in this account, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you. Um, now, this doesn't really help this man because he was probably expecting to receive some sort of monetary donation. I mean, he was accustomed to that, right? Asking for money, receiving something. Um, and yet what Peter lacked in the mater material realm of things, he provided to this man in a spiritual wealth, right? He said to this man, but uh, what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And now, whoa, <laughs> following this um, Peter takes this man by the hand and we see that immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Now, this man's response is great because he has literally been the recipient of a huge miracle. His ability to walk, to reintegrate into society. And then the text says something. He went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Now, whew. This man, he immediately understood that this was something that no man in his own power could have done. He gives God the admiration that he deserved by praising him. And now the people, I'm a, you know, the people around him are looking at him astonished and probably wondering, like, how did this happen? You know, uh, wh what? What happened? And the text says that they were filled with wonder and amazement um and about what had happened to him right so those last two words of 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 just filled with wonder and amazement really describe our god right um a god that that is so amazing that he constantly leaves us in awe um a god who orchestrates all of life's events to bring about his greater purpose 
Now, the apostles were the first to recognize this. They knew that to heal in the name of Jesus was to invoke his power and presence. That even if Peter had performed this miracle, it was not on his own accord or by his own power and strength, but by that of Jesus Christ. Now, if we read this story and think it's just a really cool story about something really cool that um, Peter did, we would really be fooled and probably miss entirely what this account is about. Um, Peter trusted in God and put his faith um, in him that in God's power and not his own, um, this man would be healed. And he did this not you know, for promotional purpose, but because this world, this would actually further prepare the crowds to bring about God's greater purpose, right? Um, as I was preparing for this, as I was studying to try to bring this devotional to you, um, I came across many scholars that that always asked or began this uh, their commentaries with the question of like, why didn't Jesus heal this man before? You know, because as we heard in the account, this, this man was at the gate every single day. So in some sort of, some, some time, Jesus must have um, seen this man, right? Probably passed this man. Um, and we, we often wonder, like, why, why couldn't he do that, right? And now we know that we can't answer, right, the questions about God's timing. But we do trust that what God has and does in his timing, he does for a purpose. So God even has a purpose for brokenness. Perhaps it was for this very moment that this man remained broken so that he might be healed in the name of Jesus, right? And so I would like to leave you with this. Our circumstances are every part, every, every little bit is a part of our testimony. What we're experiencing now, whether it's trials, tribulations, are not evidence of God abandoning us. But more than that, they're testimony builders for what God will do in his timing for his purpose. We know that this is not an insignificant miracle. As a matter of fact, this healing and everything that happens like the aftermath, it literally takes two full chapters in Acts. Um, everyone's kind of you know, just stirred up and the people, you know, they're just asking questions, wondering, and, and you'll, you'll hear more about it as we, for, as we study further in this book. Um, but ultimately, uh, this leads to the first opposition that the apostles will face in their ministry for Jesus. And I don't think that it's a coincidence that this is associated with the hour of prayer um, as a reminder that all of ministry, healing and waiting, is dependent upon God. So with that, I hope you all have enjoyed this uh, study, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.